enough time to take that question apart in you do? two pieces. Sure. No, you're shaking your head, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Not. What right. the heck? So it's the Friday. actual the yield curve that the Federal Reserve looks at, which is 10 years to three months, began yes. its inversion in late March and has been persistently inverted since then. Yep. So that's a longer term signal of impending recession. Now, as to the reasons of this most recent inversion, one of could the argue. Of two-year versus the 10-year. Two, two and tens. Listen, Argentina blew up early this week. So there was forced selling of Argentine bonds that prompted some bond market mutual fund managers to buy U.S. Treasuries. Yields uh, around the world are negative, so you're seeing forced buying of U.S. Treasuries. Not necessarily a sign that investors are panicked about the pace of growth, except that the reason all this is happening is that the global economy is slowing down dramatically in China, in Germany, in Italy, in the U.K., elsewhere, Argentina. Germany. Did you mention that? I mentioned, yeah, 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 absolutely. So but I it's think, worth mentioning twice. Twi yeah, absolutely. It's, twice, because it's the biggest <laughs> economy in Europe. So I think that... It, it, you ignore it at your own peril because everyone says this time it's different and, and all recessions that we've seen since 1967 have been preceded by an inversion of the yield curve. Mark, let me turn to you and, and get your reaction to what Ron just said. And more pointedly, tell us how you're positioning your portfolios in view of what's been going on in the economy globally uh, and in the markets uh, more particularly over the past couple of weeks. Sure. Well, first of all, as it relates to Ron's comments, um, I agree that uh, it's always dangerous to say it's different this time, but there is some static in this signal, I think. And it has everything to do with the fact that there is nearly $16 trillion of sovereign debt that is yielding less than nothing at the moment. And the gravitational pull from that pool of bonds that's growing, I think, is weighing on the 10-year Treasury bond by way of the fact that today it sports a negative 1% term premium, which is historically unprecedented. Were you to normalize the term premium at one to one and a half percent, that would take our 10 year yield from 1.6 to over three. Now, I don't suggest we should be at three, but anything above a two handle would at least flatten that inversion, if not re-steepen it. So as a consequence, I'm not taking my marching orders from the aversion that occurred uh, this week. As it relates to global positioning, it's U.S. over non-U.S., it's large cap over small cap, mm. and we're playing small ball from a sector perspective, Tyler, by way of saying we want some offense on the field with areas like consumer-facing industries, home builders, for instance. Yep. In addition to that, the hypermarkets, but as well as some of the defensive sectors like staples, just to keep an even keel with regard to this volatility, which we don't expect to recede anytime soon. So I, I was going to ask who's your Steph Curry uh, for that team, but Stephen DiNicolo, I'll, I'll ask you about that because you also have um, some particular picks here. You, you see plenty of opportunity in, in this environment. You're not worried about all the, the uh, you know, sort of big, scary signals we're talking about? We're actually very worried about those big, scary signals. And look, you can debate interest rates all day long, but just listen to the Deer conference call today and hear the effects that the trade war is having on them. Or just look at every macro indicator out there, whether it's rail car loadings, auto sales, the CAS freight index came out today for July, did not look good. Everything is slowing on a year over year basis after one of the most historic inflections of growth where you had nine quarters in a row of accelerating GDP growth on a year over year basis. That is now behind us. So we're in sort of the hangover phase of the party. But at the Federated Kaufman Funds, look, for 30 years, we've been looking for enduring growth stocks companies that can create their own momentum no matter what's going on, because frankly, hoping for a trade deal is not really an investment thesis. And we look to the companies, idiosyncratic ideas that can grow in any environment. 